Hi there! Welcome to Coding Across the Curriculum, where I'm going to show you how to use coding in other areas of the curriculum. Today, we're going to be using Google Drawings to plan a Choose Your Own Adventure story, and then Google Forms to write it. The most likely thing you can use this for is writing a story, but you could also use it to retell a story you've already read, and change the ending. I'll go through how to find each of the apps before we begin so that you can make a new file. If you want to skip to a different part of the video, because maybe some of it's too easy, click on the timestamps below in the description. Google Drawings is a very powerful tool that can allow you to do a lot of things that involve shapes, pictures, text, lines, and lots of color. For the purposes of today, we're going to use text boxes and arrows to plan our story. To make a new Google Drawing, find the folder you want to put your work in. In this case, I'm using a folder called Choose Your Own Adventure. Click on New, then click on More, then click on Google Drawings. For the work we're doing today, I'm going to name this new drawing Choose Your Own Adventure Plan. Google Forms can also be used for a lot of things in the classroom. Most people don't really think to use it to tell a story, but today we're going to try that. To make a new Google Form, make sure you're in the same folder as your plan and choose New, then More, then Google Forms. It's the purple icon. Some of you may be asking yourselves, how is this coding? How does this help computational thinking? Well, for starters, we're using one of the compute complex operations that a program does, and that's to make a decision. To plan such a story, the author or authors need to come up with what happens when different choices are made. They choose the potential path so that the reader can choose their own. Essentially, we are creating a flow diagram like this to account for many different possibilities something that is used frequently in coding and programming. Now we're ready to start planning our story. To do this, I'm going to use colored text boxes to represent each page of my story and link them with arrows. I'm going to start with a text box at the top that's green to show that this is the beginning of the story, because green means go. To change the color, you click up there, and I'm going to give it a border to make the box look a little bit neater and move it right up to the center, and you can tell it's in the middle by that red line. The text here, when I click on the box, is too big, so I'm going to change it to size 9, and I'm going to come up with my story. In this case, my hero is cleaning her attic, and she finds an old book that's making a sound. Probably when I write, I'm going to write in a little more detail and I might add that it's a mysterious book and it's making a creepy sound. But at this point, you only need to put the bare details in here. So she now has a choice. She can either open the book or she can put it back and ignore it and keep on cleaning. So to show those, I'm going to start making some more boxes that are about the same size. And instead, I'm going to make these blue boxes again with a border and again size 9. However, I want to make lots of copies of this box because I'm going to need lots later as I write my story. So I'm going to move all but a few of them out of the way and I've got my first two choices. Inside this box is um, she ignores the sound, keeps cleaning. Now, we need to move the story along a little bit, so after she ignores the sound, she's going to hear another sound, and it says, help me. Going back to the first choice, she can open the book, and let's say, out pop a genie, um, and he asks her for her help. Well, there's a choice she has over here, but we're going to focus on this side when she hears the word help me. Before I move on though, I'm going to use the line tool and select the arrow, and using the purple dots, connect the boxes. First one, then the other. Now you'll see, if I try to move this box, the line moves with it which is really great when you're making these because you probably will have to move the boxes around at some point. So, going back 
to this bit where she ignores the sound and keeps cleaning. Um, so the second time, let's make two other options. If it were me and I heard the sound again, well, maybe I would run out of the house um, and onto the street. Now, we need to have some endings in this story. So I'm going to actually make this an ending that when she runs out of the house, um, a genie appears angry and eats her. That's a pretty horrific ending. But at some point, we actually need to have some bad endings to make this a little more interesting story and make it more challenging for the reader to try and figure out what the good endings are. I'm going to change this box to the color of red, so I know that's an ending. And I'm going to connect up the two boxes like so, to show that they are connected to that last choice. So moving on, let's... Go back and fill in the choice of, this op the, of the other option so that she opens the book. Beanie grants her a wish in exchange for help. Now, as you can see, we can continue this process down and down and down. It's going to be a bit confusing when you do this because you're going to have to go backwards in your story and think about what each choice is going to be. Um, so each box will need to have either two choices, or it will need to be either red for a bad ending, or green for a good ending. Um, make sure that before you go on to the next part, that you finish up all the choices, because if you don't have the, the story filled in, it's going to be very difficult to write it as you go. Now it's your turn. Open up a Google Drawing and plan out a Choose Your Own Adventure story. You might want to spend a lot of time on this and come back later today or even on another day to watch the rest of the, the video. Make sure that you plan for all the possibilities so that you don't get confused when you're writing the story. Once we've planned our story, it's on to what is probably going to take the longest amount of time, writing it. We want to make sure that our writing makes the story and the choices interesting. We don't want just to write the story as a series of choices. While that might seem interesting to us, we want to flesh out our story so that our readers enjoy it. We're going to use the Google Form we made earlier to write our story. Google Forms has a feature that allows us to have different sections, which are essentially pages. We're going to use a new section for every box that we have in our plan. You can make a new section by clicking this button here. I would suggest making a few at the beginning, just so that you have an idea of how it's going to look like. I would suggest going through your plan and putting a number in each box, starting at one. This way, you won't get confused as to which pages you've written already and which pages you haven't. This will also make it a lot easier when you go to link your pages later on once everything is written. We will also need to name each section so that we can easily connect everything when we're done. The first section's name should be this name of the story. So I'm going to name it the surprise in the attic. Other sections should be named, but you have a choice. Often, I will give each one a name based on the choice that was made previously. So if my character put the box away, the title might be putting the box away. We're going to write our story in the description of each section. Through the power of magic and video editing, I'm going to write my story and come straight back. Wow, that was tiring. So now that I've got my first page written, I need to add my choices. I'm going to add that as a multiple choice question. The first section has a multiple choice question there already, but the ones below do not. Whenever you click to add a new question in Google Forms, it puts the questions below wherever you're clicked on currently. So right now, you can see I'm clicked on up here. If I press plus now, it's going to add a question here. So I need to go to my, the section I want the question below, click on plus, and the default is a multiple choice question. I'm going to do that for every section that I've made already, even though I haven't done the writing yet. It's probably a good idea to do these questions as you write so that later on you don't have to go back and remember what question goes with each section. 
So I'm going to go back up to my first page and add the question. It is, should Amanda, which, I've, which is what I've named my character, open the book? My first option is going to be, yes, she should. And then my second option is going to be, no, she shouldn't. My next step will be to write all of my story, carefully checking that I've written all the boxes for my plan and making sure that I write enough to make my story interesting. Now it's your turn to write your story. This might take some time, so you may want to come back later and use the timestamps at the bottom of the video to find the next part, which will be linking your choices. Now comes the cool part. We're going to link the pages up so that the choices work for the reader. This is what will make our story interactive and more fun, so that if they choose to go one way, the story goes that way. If they choose to go the other way, the story takes a turn that way. Make sure your whole story is done before you do this step, or you won't be able to link all the questions to pages that aren't there. Make sure you consult your plan as you do this next step, because if your story is long with a lot of choices, it can get complicated. I'm going to go to the first section of my story and click on the question. At the bottom of the question, you'll notice three dots. Click on the three dots and you'll see some options. You want to choose go to section based on answer. When you choose that, you'll see the two drop down menus beside each option. I know that from when if she chooses to open the book, we're going to go to section three, opening the book. If she chooses to put the book away, we're going to go to section two, putting the book away. Now you can see how when I name my sections, it really helps this part of the process. Another thing to note is that you should put required on all of your questions so that the um, readers can't just click go to the next section. When I go to an ending of the story, so for example, there's one right here, I'm going to click on the question and instead of having the form end, I'm going to ask, do you want to try again? And the options I'm going to give are yes, no, and I'm not sure why that did that, so I'll get rid of that. And again, we'll make it required and choose go to section based on answer. If they want to try again, we're going to put them up to section one. And if they want to, if they don't want to try again, we're going to go all the way to the bottom and click on submit form. Sounds pretty easy. This might be a tedious task and might take some time, but if you've planned your story out and put the numbers in the boxes and, and labeled each section, it will be a lot easier. Now it's your turn to link your pages. Go through them carefully, one at a time. Pause the video while you work and then come back. This task shouldn't take too long, at least compared to the rest of the work that you've done. As with everything we do that involves coding, it's important to test out what we've made to make sure that it works the way we want it to. This involves going through our story, reading it to check what we've written is correct, but also to make sure that the choices link up properly. To see the story the way the reader will, you can do one of two things. You can go to the send button and get the link and put that into a new tab or a new window, or you can click on the preview button there. You want to read through your writing and make the choices one at a time. You'll probably need to consult your plan just to make sure that everything is correct. It's probably a good idea also to check to make sure that everything makes sense. When you're writing a story like this, it's easy to get confused as to which happened in which pathway of the story. It wouldn't hurt on top of that to get a friend to read it for you so that they can get an outside perspective and not get confused by what you think you've already written there. There are a few things that you can do to make the story more interesting and look nice. I'm going to show you how to change the banner or color scheme, how to add pictures, and how to add videos. Though these do not really involve computational thinking, they can really jazz up your work. 
Changing the appearance is fairly easy in a Google form. You can click on the palette icon up here and you can change it to a variety of different colors. You can also click on this image uh, icon here and it will give you a lot of options. Google provides you with a variety of different pictures, but you can also click here to upload your own. Just remember that if you use an image from the internet that you've, that you've clicked on tools and usage rights and selected labels for you, reuse with modification. You also have the option of adding images or video to your story. On the sign menu, you can choose either images here and video here. I'm going to add that picture that I just looked up, an old book, because that will make the reader kind of get an idea of what we're talking about in this story. It goes off to the side, but I can align it to the center. If you really want to make your, your story interesting, I would suggest instead of writing it, act it out. Instead of making it a choose your own adventure story, you can make it a choose your own adventure movie. This might take a lot more collaboration, but I think in the end, the result will be pretty neat. Now it's your turn to add some images or videos to your story, if you'd like. Pause the video and have a try. That's all for now. I hope you've learned something from this. Please check the description for links to a sample plan and a sample story. You can also click on the timestamps to review any parts of the video you didn't quite get the first time. If you've used this video to make any stories, please post a link in the comments. Remember that if you're using a form that is open to everyone, not just your school, and that if you make a plan, make it view only so nobody else changes what you've done. We'd love to see what you've made and it would help everybody else who's watched this video. If you liked what you saw, click subscribe and watch our other videos, which will be coming soon.